Rosanna from All Gifts Matter. Welcome back to our channel. Today I have a little project uh, for you, a little tutorial on how to make one of these. And this is an air dry clay wall hanging pocket. Yet again, um, because I've noticed that um, air dry clay pockets are doing very well on my channel and it appears that people really like them. So I have a few more ideas and I thought I'd share those with you as well. So this is one of them and uh, it's really, really cute. You can see, I'm, I'm just going to put a picture so you can see what it looks like when it's hanging. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to show you how to make one of these. So let's crack on with it. Now, what you're going to use to begin with is a bit of air dry clay. I'm using Das in the white because they also have a terracotta and a stone. So this one is the white one. You can use whichever you want. It's up to you what kind of color and stuff and, you know, whatever you you you, you desire really or you can find. But the main thing is the uh, the idea, isn't it? So You've got the clay, you're gonna need a rolling pin and something the thickness of your desired sheet of clay. So I'm using these dowels. I think they are six, six millimeter uh, thick. So I'm going to use this. I usually uh, use my uh, slab roller because as i mentioned in several videos i do pottery so i have a slab roller but i decided to do to use my rolling pin so that you can uh, you can see how it works so i'm just going to flatten it a little bit more with my hand before i start rolling it's uh, very good to use the, the palm of your hand. I, I find it quite useful. And do it in each and every way. And I'm sorry about the sound. It may not sound that great. So that, and then you can use a rolling pin if you have one or you can use a bottle, you know, anything that is circular and it doesn't squash. It has to be like a hard, um, yeah, it has to have a hard thing because if it squashes, then it will change the shape as you roll. So that's, that's not what you want. So I'm going to roll this way first. And you start from the middle and then go around the edge, uh, the outside. That's what I do anyway. So we start like this and then I will turn it and do it again. And now this is not going anymore because it reached, it reached the, the thickness that we want. So now this clay is as thick as this thick, thick, and that's stage one. Now stage two, you're going to need something to make a texture on your clay. You can use whatever you, you have, whatever you prefer. You can use fabric, you can use lace, you can use a um, detail roller like I have here. You can use stamps, anything that has a texture. This is like one type of, of roller. You can use lace, you can use some crochet doily. Anything that leaves a nice, interesting pattern, it's, it's good. It depends obviously what you like. I decided to use a a flowery mat that I had for a while and I, I, I didn't get to use it yet. So I'm going to use that. So just bear with me and I'll come back with that. Right, so this is the mat that I'm talking about. 
this is actually um, one of those uh, mats that you put on your sink, um, you know, to drain your dishes on or something. But I, I always really like the, the shape. And, you know, I love flowers. I love butterflies, anything like that. Yep, please. So I'm going to try to use this. Now, this plastic rubber, so it's probably going to stick. And you might want to use some cornstarch, but I think I'm going to risk without. Um, and we'll see how we get on. If it does stick, then uh, obviously I'm going to do it all again and uh, use some cornstarch. But for now, I'm just going to, to try and see how it goes. So I'm just going to lay it on and go for it. Give it a good press so that we get a nice imprint. And uh, yeah, I think this is going to be a disaster, but you know, no, maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, that's not bad. It did have a little bit of water on because I washed it not long ago, so maybe that's why it did not um, stick which I'm quite happy about. Just gonna gently go over with that, like without putting any pressure, I'm just gonna let the weight and gravity do its thing. I'm not putting any pressure on it. And just so that all the rough edges, obviously it was a little bit dirty, but that's okay because hey ho, the uh, paint job that I'm going to be doing on this is going to, um, be kind of a uh, old, uh, shabby, worn out kind of paint. So that's okay. So put that out of the way. Now we want to decide on the shape and what kind of edges you, you would like on your project. Like if you look at the ones I've done, it's kind of a really random shape but I wanted rips on some of the edges because I wanted to look, you know, I wanted cracks and all that. And then obviously the top edge is pretty straight-ish because I have cut it with a knife. Um, so yeah, it's up to you what kind of style you want. You can have it perfectly shaped in a curvy, you know, semicircle, whatever you want. It's, uh, it's really entirely up to you, but I do like the rough um, edge. So not all over, but I wanted some of the rough edge. So I'm going to do the same for this one and, and see how I get on with that. So first of all, the top, I'm going to cut a straight for the top. When I say straight, I don't mean like exactly straight, but kind of straight, but like kind of wobble the knife a little bit so that it's not, so it still looks kind of organic and not like geometric, if you know what I mean. So that's that. And then you're gonna need this clay. So put it onto one side. And then I quite like this edge as it is, cause this bit is, is gonna crack. I actually quite like how it is to be fair. Maybe just a bit too long. So I'm just going to, again, make it look kind of organic and not too perfect. Again, put it together with that because you're going to need that shortly. So that's looking cute. I like this crack over here. And I like that there. I'm just going to stretch the top a touch. And I am going to rotate it a second. And I'm just going to make a couple of rips at the bottom here because I want it a bit more organic at the bottom. Looks a bit rich. 
it's nice to show the quality of the clay. You, you know, not, not everything needs to be perfect, you see. I do like that part of it. So that's that. So I think I'm quite happy with this kind of shape to start with. Yes. So now what you want to do, you're going to get your, a straw type of object and make some holes at the top. Leave plenty of room around the side of the hole so that it's strong. When you hang it, it's one. And that's two. It doesn't have to be perfect. And now you're going to decide what kind of, what pocket, what size pocket you would like. I don't want it in the center. I quite like it off side, like this one. You see? Onto one side. So what you want to do, you decide that, how big you want it, and then you're going to need some sort of a sponge. There's so many things. You can use anything that is kind of soft and it doesn't act, it's still sturdy but soft. It doesn't leave any imprints. So it can be a sponge. Uh, like this is one of those polystyrene eggs. So I, I cut a little bit off it so that it's flat and nice and round. You can use a square. It's up to you. What, this is a foam again. It's up to you whether you want a square pocket, if you want a rounded pocket, it's up to you. So, you know, you do have a choice what you can use. Now, you decide where you want it. I think I'm going to use the egg for that. And let's say I want it around here. So you put this to one side. And now you're going to roll another little long, kind of long. You do still need a little bit of depth. I will show you why in a second. So but we, we just roll this. I put this one to one side. Try not to roll over with the, <laughs> right, with the roller when you do that. And you know, because I've done that in the past. And we're going to roll a flat-ish. Well, you still need some length. Now, I'm going to make it a little bit thinner. So I'll remove them and use smaller skewers. These are like kebab. Kebab skewers, so the slab goes a little bit thinner and a little bit longer, which I need. And there you have it. So, that's that done. Now, you move this to one side, you decide what pattern you want on that, whether you want a pattern or you don't want a pattern, it does look better with. Um, so I think I'm going to do the same. Am I going to do the same? No, I'm not going to do the same. I think I'm going to do a lace on this one. So I'm going to get this. I'm going to do a pattern with this. So I'm just going to put it onto a an angle and I'm just going to gently roll over it because then it's flowers. It's all about flowers. So that's that. I hope you can see this. So that's my pattern for the little pocket. Now, you move it. You move this back, you decide where you want your pocket and how you want your pocket, if you want it straight, if you want it jagged or whatever you want. And just 
bear in mind that you want a bit at the bottom and then you want a bit on the side. So you're going to mark you're going to mark the edges of where you want the bit to go. I'll show you now. So basically what we're doing now from here and from here, we cut kind of a straight line, still trying to make it look organic if you can. And again, on this side, and then the bottom here, you're going to go this way. So you have like a T shape. And then, these bits here, I just going to rip them like so. And same for this one, rip it a little bit so that it looks old and broken. And then you try it and see what it looks like. And and this bit here, you're going to mark it there. And then I'm going to do more rips because I want mine to look very shabby and save to the clay there. So what you're going to do now, you turn this around You get a pointy tool like this one or a skewer or anything that you can make some marks with and you're going to score the bottom of the T and the sides of top bit. And then you're going to get some glue. I'm using Evo Stick wood glue exterior, which is very strong and thick. And I really like using that glue, it never let me down. So you get a little brush. Move that towards you so it's easier to work with. And then you lift a little bit and where you see the glue, you're just going to score a little bit and then just sort of gently rock the clay back and forth like that. And you, you actually feel it going a little bit stuck when you do that. You feel the two sides sticking together. Just be gentle so the pattern doesn't distort as much. Now if you if the pattern has come off a little bit, you just grab your your texture if you want and you can press gently to get a little bit more of a pattern, if you like. There you go. I'm quite happy with it as it is, so I'm just going to leave this for now. And that's your first part. That's the first part that you're going to be doing. Now we'll wait. Actually, we don't. What we're going to do now, actually, what I did with my other one, I just grabbed two little balls of clay, not too big. Just, just roll it into like a little bead. So you've got two of them. And what I've done, because we have a little stamp uh, logo, basically, for our, um, for our business, well, basically, basically, what I did, I, I rolled 
to little ball of clay and then I got a little bit of glue and I put it onto each side and yeah and then I, I flattened it just like that and I do want the cracks there I do like I do like cracks in clay they look good it's nice to show the quality of the clay so then you put it there on the glue and then what I did was I got my stamp and pressed on it on both sides our little logo and I just think it looks cute it looks like two rivets or something like that or buttons or you know it's just it just adds something to it that I really like now this is done now we're just going to wait for it to dry and I will be right back hi guys we're back again this is all dry it's turned out really nice the only thing I've done off camera since I left you was I just went when the when the clay was still wet I just went around and just imprinted just pressed a, a single one of these flowers uh, crochet flowers in different uh, places because I thought it would add to the composition so that's the only thing I've done off camera and other than that I've just waited for it to dry and it's good to go for uh, painting so painting what you're gonna need is any color paint that you like uh, it would be better if it's uh, anything that is matte um, like ch uh, any chalk paint or any matte uh, flat paint that you have however you're going to need a very watery very watery mix you don't need it to be too thick you want it to 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 almost be translucent you don't want it to be too thick well at least in my case i, I didn't want it to be too thick it's actually a very you know very pale because i'm going to also put some white wax on this um and um some antiquing wax to create this basically to the patina on here so i'm just going to show you what i've done but obviously you can do this with any color that you have available so let me show you what i did for that one so i'm using it was just a sample like this one uh, that they were on sale um, but in the color leafy green which is this one which i don't have the container anymore because i mixed it all in here now this is this is thick and this has um some uh, this has some um, baking powder in it because i've used it for something else so i've put some in another cup and i've made a very watery mix for this project so that's what I'm using. It, the color is called leafy green, but it's definitely this one. And it was, uh, yeah, it was for sale. I always uh, pick up samples for sale. In our DIY store, there's, they've got lots of them all the time for sale. So as soon as I see any matte, flat or chalk paint, I just pick it up for future use because you never know, don't you? So now, simple we're just going to go over the whole piece with this watery mix so you put paint a little paint and quite a bit of water so you, it is actually very watery so we're just going to uh paint it everywhere i was thinking i might get a bigger brush to apply this and i'm just going to apply it everywhere as a first coat You can spread it around because you don't want to, you basically want to see the clay underneath. And in fact, what I've forgotten is 
that I want to put some blue roll on here because otherwise I'm making a mess of all my wood. <laughs> I work on the uh, birch plywood, you see, and I keep using new boards every time and then I just wreck them. Hmm? That's what I do because I'm messy because I don't plan anything. <laughs> anyway, so I'm just going to do this as a first coat and then I'm going to dry it uh, just with an air dryer. And then I'll show you what I'll do next. If there is some puddle, you might want to leave that because when it dries, it's just going to make um, like a, a bit of an effect. It's going to be dark, light, dark, light, which is what you actually want to happen. Go all around the edges. And then also, you might want to grab your paper and just hold this up and do the inside as well. Don't want to miss anything, do you? And that. And then what I do, aside from drying it with the air dryer, what I'm also going to do is you grab a little tissue, a rag, or anything you have handy, like I have a rag, and you can dab some of the paint off. Not all, just a little dab there and there. Put these to one side. And then grab a hair dryer and just give it a blast. And uh, so that it dries. So that's that. And now you just want to, instead of going all over again, you just want to sort of dab a bit more there and there in different spots. And that's about it with this paint at the moment. In fact, actually, you might just want to pick it up quickly. Might have to make a mess of your hands there. And at the back, just give it a quick, just so that the back is done as well. Doesn't matter how it looks, but I prefer to paint mine instead of just leaving it unfinished. So, just do that and then you can just lay it back down and it'll just dry on its own. Just make sure the top is painted. Doesn't matter if it looks stained, that's even better. And then uh, put that back down and get the air dry again. Now that it's dry, we are going to get some white wax. I'm going to get white wax is just the normal uh, furniture finishing wax from our DIY store, the white mat. I think it was ten pound for the for this, which is half a liter. Ten pound, ten British pound that is. So, gonna get that. I think I'm gonna scrape the bits off the lid. So I'm going to get a wax brush. And just dab it on the lid and then go into the details, try to rub it. Just, you know, just dab it as deep as you can. 
doesn't have to be everywhere but we are going to rub it off in places with the uh, damp cloth what we are essentially doing is creating texture even with the paint not only with the with that uh, pressed pattern basically So you're dabbing, not brushing. And you put that on the side and you grab your damp cloth. This has been used a few times, so. <laughs> and then you just dab into places. Gently, careful not to crack anything. See, we are creating a lovely patina on it, and I like it. It looks cute. Now, what we're going to do, we are also going to get, I'm still going to make a mess of this wood, am I? Of course I am. What we're also going to do, is get some antiquing wax with a small brush. I'm using four cart antiquing wax. Undiluted, I'm just going to go in. I'm just gonna go from the lid to start with actually. And even if I dab, if I put some in there, I'm just going to dab it in the lid. And then try and go right into the, the corners, you know, all the little, because it will stay there inside. Because we are going to rub this off as well. And it should leave a nice effect on your peas. Again, it doesn't have to be everywhere. You decide where it looks good to you. And then you're going to grab your... Uh, your damp cloth and wipe off and dab and wipe in some more places. So that's that. Grab your cloth and just rub off. I think I might put a little bit dark, darker um, white wax on it in places. I'm going to use like a flat uh, sponge and I'm just going to put a little bit of white wax on. Just a touch because I don't want it everywhere. So I'm just going to rub gently so that you know, my intention is to just um spread it on the elevated part as opposed to everywhere so it's not going to go deep in if it makes sense that's why i'm using this because it doesn't go all over the place and I just want a few bits, just a few highlights. See, that's gone too deep, so I'm just going to rub it off a bit. And there. Lovely. 
And that's all I'm going to do. And that is how I achieve that effect, which I absolutely love. Oh, it's so lovely, this. Really like it. Very happy with it. So, oops, I'm dropping everything. And now I'm just going to leave it for a little bit so that it dries properly. And then we go into the final part, which is the hanging, uh, um, well, system, if you like. And uh, that's what we're going to do next. So I'll be right back. And I'm back. Now, this is all dry. Looks very pretty. I'm really happy how it turned out. I don't know if you can see a bit more detail. But yeah, it looks it looks good. That's exactly what I wanted. So it's all dry. Now, the hanging system. There's a lot of possibilities for hanging this piece. That simple one is to just put jute cord straight through the hoops straight to the hole. You can hang it that way. Or you can use this system like I did for this one. For this one, I've used a spindle from an old uh, either chair or a bed um, headboard or something like that. So it's one of these. So what I've done is I've cut these ends off and then I've capped I've capped the end with these pins. They're like um, upholstery uh, pins because I got them from some old chair. So I've just put a cap on both sides. It just seems to make sense to me. It just, you know, just finishes it well. Um, and I put some beads as well in between that. And then waxed the spindle. And I put some of the green paint um, a bit everywhere as well. So that, you know, I think it's a, a very good uh, finish. So that's that one. Now, instead of the spindle, if you don't have one, you could use driftwood. Every time I go for walks on the beach, I always pick up driftwood because I, I really like driftwood. Uh, so you could use that again with the jute cord so you would well I will show you because I think I'm going to use this one anyway so you could use that or if you don't have driftwood you might have some uh, I don't know some timber like this is a tantalized so it's, it's treated for the outdoor and it actually has a green within it which actually really goes very well with that. So you would obviously cut the right length that you need, um, you know, anything like that. But if you don't, if you just have a plain um, piece of timber, you could use the same technique that you've used to paint um, and wax the, um, the actual pocket so that it would match. Or you might just like to wax it alone, just white wax it, and then have the contrast of the wood against it you know there's so many possibility with this or if you didn't want to use wood you could or, or jute cord you could use a wire you know you could just thread some wire through and just have a hanging thingy like that although i'm not sure that i would use wire because you might end up you know because it's hard it might just snap you know crack something or whatever i don't know but you you can do if you're careful enough you know once you're hanging it you're hanging it so it's not going to be moving um daily or whatever that it cracks but you know it's a possibility so you could use wire um anyway in this case i'm going to use driftwood so i'm going to use driftwood and i'm probably going to put some beads just maybe one on each side, like I did with the other pocket. And I uh, I think I'm going to cap these as well with a pin because I just feel it finishes it off well. And I do like 
I do like metal and I'm I'm going to put some wax on it so it's going to have some sort of a patina on it and um, everything should just, uh, you know, fall into place. So, yeah, I'm just going to put the pins in and I'll be back in a second. Here we go. I'm back. I've put the pin as a cap on both hands. And this is obviously not a straight piece, but I really, really like it because of that. So that's that done. I'm just going to, I'm going to put some, um, in fact, you know what? I don't think I need any wax because that it looks quite nice as it is, to be fair. So, no, no wax. So I'm going to get some jute cord, cut a nice length of it. And then I can always uh, cut it off. So, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go through and at the half point and then go through once more. So, I'm just wrapping it around basically, like so. And then I'm going to tie a knot as close as I can to the pocket so that it won't move as much so that's first and i'm going to repeat it on this side that's the first step and that's that done and then if you want to put beads you just peek Pick some beads that you like. I think I, I quite like these uh, dark brown ones. That they, they have like a little bit of a pattern on and a bit of a shade. So I'm going to use these for this one. And then you thread that through both. You just have to cut a little bit off. And pull that through. That's that done. And the other one. And then I'm going to tie another knot as close as I can to the bead. I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm trying, I'm trying my best. And so you have this part done. Now, what you're going to do, you're going to split the two and you're going to put this there like so and then cross and wrap both one on one side, one on the other. You can now, I mean, it's up to you now what kind of length um, string you have, how many times you want to go around, but I'm quite, I like quite a bit. There we go. I think, oh yeah, I think I went around three, three times probably and then tie a knot and another that's that for now and we'll do the same on this side so we got that far hey that's that done now, you grab the two, make sure, in fact, it doesn't really matter whether it is in the center or not, but you're going to grab the four, turn it towards you, so it's probably easier. So you're going to grab the four, and now you can either do a macrame if you want, 
or just simple knot like so and it doesn't matter where the knot is because it will look nice regardless so it doesn't matter whether it's on top or the bottom or whatever on the side in the center it doesn't really matter so you'll do that that's all nice and tight and then you cut and that's it it's all done now if you if you were very creative and you know how to do macrame you could do the whole hanging um um system with macrame so yeah it's up to it really is up to you what you you'd like so but this is really cute i'm i'm really really happy with it i'm going to put a picture of the finished piece with some maybe greenery in it flat flowery things and uh yeah i hope you've enjoyed it and i hope you're going to make some and um uh, thank you very much for watching i really appreciate your support and thank you for helping our channel grow and I shall see you soon for the next tutorial. Bye for now.